split screen recording. Uh, so we're going to do a quick exercise where we change the configuration in the base scenario so that we're going to just going to change the convergence layer that's used by, by one, of the, one of the links. So this is the base scenario. If you remember, it's got uh, node 2, node 1, node 3, node 4 is the satellite out here. And we're just going to change the, the convergence layer between node 1 and node 2 which currently uses UDP. This is UDP in both directions right now. Uh, and we're just going to change that to use uh, TCP instead of UDP. Uh, so I'm here in uh, the home directory for the, the core user, cd into dot core, configs, NASA DKN, dev kit, base. And again, I, I've got a, a module later that talks about sort of what, what all this structure is, but for now, it's just cd down into config, and th these are all the config files for the various nodes that make up the scenario. So we've got everybody right there. Um, so uh, the first thing that we've got over here on our list is edit n2's bprc file so that it has a TCP induct. So I'm going to look at n2 bprc file. Uh, here's here its inducts down here. Uh, and I'm just going to take this UDP line and copy it and uh, turn it into a TCP CLI. Okay, so now, uh, now N2 is, uh, has got a TCP CLI. I can look at N1's BPRC file, and I can change its outduct. And if I look at this, I look at N1. It's got an address uh, of this link that's headed for node 2 as 10.001. Node 2 is 10.002. So I know that that is, in particular, that's the, the line that I want to change here. So I'll tell it that it's got a TCP connection there, and then I don't have to give it any, uh, there, there's no TCP CLO that I have to give it there. Uh, and finally, because those two, node 1 and node 2, are directly connected uh, here, I need a plan for getting to my neighbors, right? So uh, I'm look at N1's IPNRC, and right here, it's got a plan to get to node 2 that currently says UDP. And I'm just going to change that to say use TCP. Uh, and then I will restart this scenario. And we're going to use uh, the, the slide over here says, says use TCP dump. I'm probably going to use Wireshark. Um, but I'm going to let all of the visualization helper stuff show up. Uh, and in particular, here's bping. And what we, uh, what we notice is there's a bunch of bundles that are sitting on node 1 and not going anywhere. And that's sort of curious. There are a bunch of other bundles that are piling up at node 3. And we saw that before, right? Because what this is doing is node 2 is pinging at node 4. And we would expect things to pile up on three uh, until we see connectivity. But these things that are piled up at node one are a little bit curious, right? Those, those, uh, not clear why those are there. So let's go ahead and start Wireshark on node two. And what we see are we've got bundles that are headed from 10.002 to 10.001. But we never see a bundle go back from 10.001 towards 10.002. So things are going uh, grab this. Things are going out in this direction from 2 to 1, but we never see a bundle come back across that link. And every now and then we see these uh, red things from TCP that are showing up. Uh, so this. Uh, testing and verifying, we don't really have to start the B-ping because uh, that got started for us automatically. Uh, and we can use Wireshark to look and, and see these things going on. Uh, but what's going on? So there are a couple places to go. Uh, sort of the, the, the general flow chart for how do you do troubleshooting, uh, at least for me, is uh, do, I have, uh, do I have IP connectivity between the things that, that I, that I want to have talk to each other? Um, does the node that's, that I think should be transmitting, well, is it really transmitting? 
is routing working and, and are bundles moving across that link? Are they actually getting emitted? Uh, and then go figure out what the, what the receiving node thinks is going on. Uh, another thing that we can look at uh, is if I double click on node one, and then I have to go find the, the terminal. Uh, if I double click on node one and I do an ls down in here, uh, there's a file in here called ion.log. This is ion's log file. Uh, typically uh, very useful for doing debugging. One of the first things to do is look in the ion.log file. And you can find it, uh, next so these are uh, a bunch of information uh, things that are showing up in ion uh, that all looks like startup is going reasonably well. Uh, and here's a duplicate endpoint because I have of my configuration, some of it sort of overlaps with itself. Um, and then, I'll move this over a little bit. Uh, we've got this line here that says, uh, can't connect to TCP socket, connection refused from 10.002. And that looks kind of bad. Uh, and it's related to TCP, which is the thing that we were trying to change. And if we go look over here, uh, 10.002 is the uh, is node two, and if we're not able to form a TCP connection there, well, we're not gonna be able to flow bundles over that TCP connection. Um, and another thing that we can do on node one, uh, we can type BP stats. Uh, BP stats cleverly doesn't have any output that you can, that you can see immediately, uh, but what it does do is it causes ion to spit some stuff out into the ion.log file. Uh, and so this tells you uh, about bundles that have been uh, sourced by a particular node, forwarded, actually transmitted, actually received, uh, and, and delivered. So what we're seeing here is uh, we're, we're trying desperately uh, to forward bundles, and uh, so we've received uh, 400 and a total of 452 bundles uh, of a particular size. Um, you've transmitted about 453, and if we're a node that's, that's sitting in the middle of relaying uh, bundles back and forth, uh, I, I would actually expect to transmit more stuff than this uh, because we're going to have to we're, we're going to receive bundles in both directions, uh, and we're going to need to transmit bundles. Uh, both both the, the ping requests and the acknowledgments uh, that should be coming back. Uh, and again, when we looked in Wireshark, this is the kind of thing we were seeing. And in particular, you know, we see these these things from uh, uh, that won't work. Uh, if I fire this up, we, we can, if, we, if you look, what you'll see are times when node one is trying to stitch up a TCP connection to node two. Uh, and it's not working. Uh, so what's going on? And uh, uh, the extra bit is, well, those instructions weren't entirely complete. There was a bit missing, and it's that N2 doesn't know about the TCP protocol. We gave it a TCP induct, uh, but we didn't actually tell it that TCP was like a protocol that it was supposed to know about and, and be able to use. So if I shut this down, I can go in here now and look at uh, uh, oops, into the PPRC file. And lo and behold, yeah, we've got protocol for UDP, we've got a protocol line for LTP, but we don't have anything for TCP. So I'm gonna just take this UDP line and duplicate it there. And then fire this off again. And what I expect to see now is that uh, things will be working and we'll be able, if we TCP dump or use Wireshark, we'll be able to see bundles going in both directions, uh, one direction using TCP and the other direction using uh, UDP. So let's see if that actually worked. Well, okay, first we can see that, that ping is actually working, so that's good. Uh, so something went right. And then if we look in here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. <clears throat> uh, if we look in here, then what we see is 
Uh, here's a bundle from 10.001 to 10.002, uh, and that's a bundle that is, is hiding inside TCP. And if we look for a bundle from 10.002 to 10.001, uh, we see that that's a bundle that's sitting inside UDP. So, so there we've, uh, that, that illustrates a couple of things. One is actually making the change so that you're using a TCP convergence layer and, and not UDP. Uh, and uh, also that if you get the configuration wrong on, on one of those ends, then things will you know, things can stop working and it can be, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to go suss that out and, and figure out where the, where the, where the issue is. We'll talk more about what's in the ion.log file and, and, and sort of debugging and, and maybe using some of the watch characters uh, to figure that out uh, a little bit later.